In this video, I'm going to show you the fastest way to use the PSD to 3D plugin to send something into Maya. We're going to use the light version for now because all of the same features are also in the pro version. So the first thing we're going to do is go to the Windows and Extension and load up the exporter. The exporter is actually really simple. It doesn't do anything that you can't already do by yourself in Photoshop, but it just expedites and automates the process. There's only two options here and one last button. Uh, one option to make note of is the export layers as PNG. This will actually write the layers out as PNG files. This is something we can also do from inside of Maya. I prefer to do it in Maya because it's faster, so I won't be using this for this example. Expand number of pixels. This is how far from the edges of the alpha channel on the layer, the geometry will expand so that you're not clipping off texture detail. And I'll show you that a little bit more when we get in there. So if you bring your attention down to the layers here, you'll see that I don't have any folders and there's no layer effects or anything fancy going on. This has been cleaned up and named properly so that it's easy to work with. Inside of the channels, I want to get rid of any extra alpha channels that might be floating around and make sure there's no paths. So this is a file that is ready to be exported. So I'm going to say run the PS code. From here, I'm going to drop my new image that the plugin is going to create inside my source images folder in my Maya project. This is where Maya likes to store textures by default. And we'll call it no 3D guy flat. What the plugin is going to do is it's actually going to identify boundaries and create curves that can be used to generate the geometry inside of Maya. So once we're inside Maya, you can either load up the PSD to 3D plugin from the shelf here, assuming it all installed correctly. Sometimes I have problems with this button and it doesn't work. So another way of doing it is just pull it in through the plugin manager and just find the PSD to 3D. Like I said, we're going to use the light for this example just because we're doing the most basic linear mesh generation. So you should see it up in the PSD to 3D menu up here and just click the generator editor. So let's just jump right in and import the file. Okay, so we'll navigate to the no 3D guy folder and just pull this file in. It might take a second to pull in because it's actually trying to process all of the curve data in the path channel of the PSD file. So on the left, what you'll see is all the layers that are in the Photoshop file, and you'll also see their corresponding size in pixels. Currently, when we generate the PNGs, we generate them to the full composition size. And you'll also see that in the linear path, it says we have a path available to generate geometry from. And this comes from that blue outline that you saw being drawn on each layer during the export process. And that means they were all successful and we should be able to get a mesh out of them. You can select one layer at a time to generate or shift select groups or control select them if you so wish, or press control A and you can select all of them. Because we didn't generate our PNGs from Photoshop, we'll be generating them from Maya, which is, like I said, a lot faster. The mesh group name, that you can make a custom mesh group name that everything, all of the layers will sit under, all of the objects. Uh, the depth between layers refers to how far apart the layers are spaced on the z-axis, and this will make more sense when we actually generate it. Keeping hierarchy will preserve groups if there were any in the Photoshop file. Mesh scale is just the default size with which everything is generated. So that can be either smaller or bigger, depending on what you want to do. So I'm going to leave the group name empty. It's so by default, it will use the Photoshop file name and we're going to generate all of the meshes. Bonk, just poke that button. Should be pretty fast. Great. There they are. But you'll see right away, there's no textures on this. Even if I press six, there's nothing there. So the next step is to generate the PNGs and this will create PNGs and assign a material to each one of the layers. So while these are generating, every time it jumps, it's actually created one PNG. We'll take a look at the no 3D guy flat folder. So it's created a folder and inside of that folder, it's populating it with the PNG files. You can see them there with the alpha channels. And again, they are all the size of the original composition. Okay, so now we should be able to see the textures. If they don't pop up right away, press five and six again, it just means they haven't loaded into memory yet. And there you go. There are all of the textures. You might notice that the textures are popping in front of and behind unpredictably. This is because you have alpha channels on your materials. So to get around this problem, just go to the renderer viewport two and just turn on depth peeling. And that should fix any problems that you have with the visibility of the meshes. Okay, now that everything's in here, let's take a look at the outliner and see what it's made. So on the left, we have the outliner and this is kind of like the map of every all the objects inside of a Maya scene file. 
So we have the group, the group name, just like I said, no 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 3D guy flat, and we've got it followed by group and PSD to 3D. And this is just we do this so that we don't have any duplicate names that pop up because Maya hates duplicate names and it creates all kinds of problems. So this is the group. You can make that custom group name if you want. Just be careful that you don't make it the same name as an existing layer. So you can see each object has been generated from one of the layers, and below this. If you if these you have the visibility of these enabled, you'll see all these little hidden objects, and these are the spline files that are actually used to generate the mesh. So there's going to be more of them for some layers because there were multiple curves to create this surface. Do not delete these until you're finished generating your meshes or tweaking them. Before we get into modifying, let's just jump into the hyper shader to take a look at what it made there. In the hyper shader, we have a texture for every single layer of the file so you can see here's our background dots png and here is the corresponding material you can obviously adjust the material properties if you so please and modify them as you wish depending on your experience level with maya we've got this material set up specifically so that it captures the feeling of the artwork without having too much lighting and shading on it but you can change that obviously as you wish every layer in a photoshop file gets its own material if you don't like having a material for every single layer what i suggest doing is doing something that's laid out more like a texture map and have all your geometry grouped together like we have here and then just separate it later Okay, let's go back and have our outliner visible. So now let's talk about adjusting the layers. So you may notice on a layer like this, for instance, there's too many faces, and perhaps on a layer like this, there isn't enough. So this is what we were talking about, getting clipping around the edges. Remember when I talked about the expansion? So you can see that the polygons are just a little bit, the edges are just outside of the actual alpha channel itself, but we don't have enough resolution to follow the contours of the shape that we need. So we have too few here, and I would say we have too many on these these ones right here so you can see there's just we don't really need that many so let's pull up the generator really quick here and just find those two background layers and we can select them like that and let's put this down to one and we'll say generate two meshes okay and that will automatically create a lower resolution mesh so now they're down to one this is more what we would like okay so let's go for these flowers here for instance and let's increase the mesh resolution so let's find them up here. You can see it's flowers loose. We'll go to flowers loose. And I'm, let's, I'm just going to put it to 1,000. Let's go crazy. Now you can see it's not actually 1,000 faces. Like I've said before, it's probably 1,000 faces in a square shape. But uh, this is just using Maya's internal algorithm for generating planar surfaces from curves. That looks a lot better to me. It looks like we capture all the contours and we're not clipping off any of the image almost right there so we could go higher if we want to so let's let's just go a dash higher doesn't hurt Our resolution counts are pretty low here there we go let's have a look cool i think that looks awesome and it's really not that high of a poly count great so from here you can start sculpting and modifying and doing whatever you want i'm not going to get into that in this video because i just want this to show you the process of importing and modifying resolutions of meshes. Once you're happy with the resolution of the meshes that you made, you can delete all of the history. And this is going to get rid of the connections to Maya's mesh generation system. So all this stuff here that you don't really need after you're happy with what you have. So you can just go up here and go edit, delete all by type history. Those of you that know Maya will know all about this. I'll get further into this into in other tutorials, but it is important that you clean up your scene as you're building things, especially after you've done all this mesh generation so you can on the shelf i have here we have these two icons this will delete all the history in the scene and this one will just delete history from objects that are selected so once you're happy with everything you can go ahead and clear out these spline paths and if you think you, you might want to regenerate or do more things one thing i recommend doing is actually either changing the name of all these layers so you can actually change the name and this way you won't get a conflict in the name so we'll just change this we can just get rid of the group here okay so if you select all of these we can go we can go to modify and we can go to prefix and we can just add a prefix let's just say version 01 underscore and that'll put a uh, version 01 on this whole thing and what that will do is it will make it so you don't have any conflicts if you feel like you want to regenerate certain meshes 
it'll come in just fine and you'll have zero conflicts. It'll recreate the splines and you'll have some new stuff that you can actually work with. Just before we pop out of this and stop the whole video, let's just open up the Photoshop file that, that was actually generated from the plugin and just take a look at what the difference between this file and your original file is. So this here is the, well, here's the original. And here's the one that, that we created. So the only big difference here is the paths. So if you go to the path folder, and if that's not, if you can't see that, it's just in here under windows and go to the paths, it should show up. And these are the paths that, that we created with the plugin inside of Photoshop to define the boundaries of the geometry. So the cool thing about this is if you want to change these at all, you can either create your own paths or delete. Let's say we just deleted all these together. And if I save this, so I just press save, just control S, I can pop right back in and I can go reload. So now it's re reading that file again and it's regenerating the paths. So this means I deleted the window holes from that wall. I'll put this mesh down to one and I'll go generate. We'll just move it off because I didn't have any spacing on it. But now what it's done is you can see that I don't have holes in that mesh anymore. Even if I increase the resolution of this mesh to 100, let me go generate, I don't have holes in it anymore. So you take a look at the difference between that mesh and this mesh. This one has holes in it. This one doesn't have any. And it's because I actually changed what's going on in this path file. If I wanted to create my own hole, so let's take a round ellipse tool here. And I'll just draw this right here. So now what I can do is I will save this PSD. I don't have to export again. And let's just run this one more time. This can get a little bit annoying because right now, oops, um, right now you have to reload every time. We're trying to speed this whole process up of reloading because this is it writing the JSON file to generate the curves. And it's it's definitely needs some optimization. So if we do the wall window again and we go generate mesh, now we have a hole. That's kind of cool, hey? I just wanted to show you the potential of playing with the file after the fact. You don't have to export it again. You just have to reload the PSD file. You can even add your own layers if you want to. As long as you have a path that's created and it has the exact same name of the layer, then it will be properly associated with the file inside of Maya. Awesome. Okay, well, I think we'll just call that a wrap on that one.